If you haven't heard about Anchor by Spotify, it's the easiest way to make a podcast with everything you need all in one place. Let me explain. Anchor has tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. When hosting on Anchor, you can distribute your podcast on listening platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon, and so many more places. It's everything you need to make a podcast all in one place. And best of all, it's totally free. Download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Hello again and welcome to another episode of Real Talk with RJ. If this is your first time listening, please don't forget to like and subscribe and follow so you know exactly when we release brand new episodes. Also, don't forget to share. The focus of this episode is going to be about the old saying that Every woman should be treated like a queen and every man should be treated like a king. That's a saying that has gotten kind of warped, in my opinion, as of late. And honestly, like, I'm starting to see more people, more men out there demanding that they be treated like kings. And I'm seeing more women out there demanding that they should be treated like queens. The thing is, neither of them had earned it. For some reason, people have adopted this warped perspective that you have the right to be treated like a king or a queen. That's not true and that's not correct at all. You don't have that right. You have the right to be treated with respect. That's it. You have to earn the privilege of somebody treating you like royalty. In my opinion, like, yeah, we're we're not talking about legitimate royalty. We're talking about respect with uh, serving each other, taking care of each other. That's the kind of uh, royalty I'm talking about. That's what I mean, because, of course, you know, the real royals don't have to lift a finger. They don't do anything but get spoiled their entire life because of who their family was. But that's a whole different story. And that's not what this uh, this episode is about. I'm just talking about people in romantic relationships. There are a lot of women these days that are going up and thinking that they don't need to do anything but, you know, carry the power of the almighty JJ. That is not valuable as much as you think yeah guys are going to go after women like that and they're after one thing you know so if 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 you want to be a woman who wants to sleep around you have that right that's you but don't look for a high quality man because men are not going to respect you if you're easy that's just the reality if you're easy men are not going to respect you the same exact way that women are not going to expect a man who is willing to do whatever it takes to get inside you know to have sex with her Women don't want men who are desperate. You know, that's just a fact. Women want men who have respect for themselves, who have something going. But there's also this uh, this population of women out there who want a man to do everything for them. They don't want to lift a finger. They don't want to do anything in return other than have sex when they feel like it. But they want the man to pay all the bills. They want the man to take care of her, her desires as far as getting her eyelashes, her hair done, her nails done. Uh, going to get mani petties, going out and get spoiled. She wants to get spoiled, and the man does everything. And she doesn't have to cook. She doesn't have to clean. Even though this particular woman usually is one who is not employed, but just wants to be so cute that she has all that coming. I'm going to tell you right now, no woman is going to have that kind of lifestyle if you're not doing something to contribute. That's just the reality of it. At some point, like if you want someone to take you serious and to respect you, at, then you have to do something to contribute. If you don't work, you need to be doing something to keep that house clean. That's You have to be contributing somehow, some way to this relationship. If the man is working and paying all the bills and you're not working, if you're able, of course, if, if you're paralyzed or you just don't have the means, then yeah, there's that. But if you're a full, able-bodied individual, then you need to be out there cooking you need to be cleaning you need to be taking care of the children if you have children you need to be doing something to carry your weight so that you don't seem like a dependent that you don't seem like a dead weight on this person's body because i'm telling you at some point sex gets old especially if that's all there is every one of us who have been promiscuous myself included because i have a past where i was very promiscuous every one of us looked at that person at, at we have at least one person where we're like man oh my gosh, I wanted him so badly or I wanted her so badly. 
And once you got them, you know, it was good and it's cool. But then all of a sudden they started to irritate you and show the real face. You couldn't stand them. And then later on, when you finally ended it, you could never you could never figure out what it is you saw in them. That's because we were blinded by the sex. We didn't get to take a chance to actually get to know this person. So I'm telling you that right now, that if you think that the the JJ, the power of the JJ is going to sit there and have all that coming to you and you don't have to lift a finger, you're going to get kicked out because I'm telling you, it's a competitive world out there. And there are a lot of good women who want good men. There's also a lot of toxic women who want good men and are willing to destroy a home to get them. But the uh, the irony is if 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 a woman can take a good man from his woman, he's not a good man. Having said that, it's also possible for a good man to be in a relationship with a woman who takes him for granted. And the attention that this new girl is showing him could make him start thinking about whether or not he's settling. And the last thing you want is for your partner to realize that they're settling for you. Once they realize like, man, I'm settling, I'm not happy. I do all this because make no mistake, that woman who really wants your man, she's going to make sure he knows that he's appreciated by her. She's going to make sure he knows that she notices his cologne scent or that he, he she notices that he got a, a brand new haircut or he just shaved or or he has a new shirt or new shoes. She is going to make sure that he knows she is aware of him and then she's going to talk to him and say you know what it's so good that you take care of the bills that you provide that you're such a good provider it is sad that you have a woman that doesn't appreciate that you know you and then of course she's going to capitalize on the things you're not doing she's going to capitalize and say oh well you know if my man if when he comes home he will get a hot meal especially if i'm not working he will come home every day to a hot meal because i would make sure my baby has something to eat when he comes home. You think that's not going to be in that man's head? That man's going to be like, man, when's the last time I had a hot meal that I didn't have to pay for? I'm telling you, if you got a man that's willing to do something like that, you better contribute. If you got a man who's willing to, to take care of all the financial weight in the relationship, you better contribute because you will lose your man to someone who is willing to value them more. Now, having said that, it is the exact same thing when it comes to to the roles being reversed men if you have a woman out there that is willing to put a hot meal on your stove or on your on your table and and uh cook for you and take care of you and make sure that you have everything you need to get up and pack your lunch or to make your dinner make your breakfast she's willing to get up early so that you don't have to do these things if you have a woman like that you better not take it for granted because i'm telling you there's always going to be another man out there who's willing to make sure she knows that if he were in the picture and he were her one and only, she would be much happier. And this is often the case of people who are not married. So because you're not married, hey, she's under no legal obligation to be with you. Yeah, she can sit there and say, well, you know, I love him. But then he's going to ask that 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 real deep question and make her really think. Do you think he loves you? I, I don't doubt that you're in love with him, but is he truly in love with you? And then maybe he might quote a scripture or might say, you know what? You can tell when someone's in love. There's no question about it when they're truly in love with you. Their actions show it. Like if I'm sitting there and I'm saying with my partner that I'm deeply in love with her. If I tell her I love her a bunch of times, but I'm always alone. I always go out club and go out partying with other girls and have fun with them. And then, you know, turn my phone off and ignore her calls and everything like that. I'm not showing her I love her because I wouldn't want that done to me. Why would I want to do that to my wife if I'm not, if I wouldn't want that done to me? I'm telling you, if you got a good, like people have like these noses for good men and women. So if you got a good woman, you're not going to be the only one who recognizes that. You can go ahead and just, you could be one of those types of dudes that sits there and, and just like hammers down her confidence. You can hammer her confidence down and make sure that she realizes that you're the best she'll ever get but at some point somebody's going to see that's what the situation is then that guy's going to start building a relationship with her building a friendship with her encouraging her and when she cries guess who she's going to call she's going to call him because you're going to be so entitled and so off doing your own thing that you're not going to realize she's on the phone with another dude you're going to be 
care le- you're going to be caring less while you're sitting there looking at your other girls and looking at these other interests that you have and she's going to be crying out to another man who's willing to actually listen to her and that man is going to help her build the con- the courage to realize that she is worthy of a good man and then you're going to lose her and there's nothing you can do to get her back because she's going to finally for the first time in her life be happy I'm telling you you're never going to get one better than an exceptional woman every good man out there every man out there will have at least one exceptional woman now you can go ahead and take advantage of that that exceptional woman and then all the other ones you're going to get are probably okay or not as good but you're always going to remember that exceptional woman you let go of i'm very blessed because the woman i have in my life is the exceptional woman the woman that is like surpassed all my past women i know that sounds bad but like i said i was a dog in the past this woman has surpassed every woman i've ever met in my life like by leaps and bounds she is my best friend and i didn't know love could be this incredible I didn't know a woman could ever love me as much as this woman does. I didn't know I could be this vulnerable with a woman without feeling emasculated. My, like, I'm so not used to a woman giving me foot massages. If I, if I were to sit there, if my feet were anywhere near her lap, she would pick them up and she would give me a foot massage. Do you have any idea how incredible that is to have, first of all, men tend to have feet that are not the most pleasant to look at, especially for working. You know, our feet are usually in, in work boots or like tight shoes or whatnot. So our our feet will often have a different smell than a woman's feet. For some reason, I don't know why women can walk in high heels outside in 150 degree weather and still come out and their feet don't stink like that. I'm pretty sure there's some out there that do, but I've never smelled it. Women take out their, their heels and they're just, their feet are hurting, but there's no smell. Us, for us guys, when we take off our shoes, Like we got to sit there and have church. We got to have a prayer. We got to get the holy water out and start, you know, blessing the shoes and hoping that no evil spirits come out in the the form of a stench and just start murdering people in the house. We got to make sure that our feet smell good. We got to have that spray on standby. And as soon as we take them off, boom, we smell them. All right. And we hit them with spray, let them air and we're good. Especially if you got work boots. This is definitely a common problem that happens when you have work boots you gotta you gotta switch your shoes up switch your boots up all that stuff like that but you know if you're working in the heat working in the fields often you know there's a stench a a smell that comes with them feet from working there's a working feet so hey it happens but my fiance she will pick my feet up and start massaging them i can ask my baby to scratch my back and she'll scratch my back if my neck is hurting she'll just without me asking she'll give me a massage on my neck or my shoulders her fingers aren't very strong, but like, you know, the fact is that this is her best effort. That's what makes it so, so special to me is that this is her best effort. She's always giving me her best, but make no mistake. I give my absolute best to her. That's why she treats me like a king. And that's why I treat her like a queen. She has earned that respect in my opinions, in my eyes she has earned the respect to be the queen of my kingdom and in her eyes i have earned the respect and reliability to be the king in her kingdom now no king is exceptional without an exceptional queen that's just how it is you need your exceptional uh teammate so just because uh just because a a male is a male doesn't make you worthy of being the man in her life now I'm not going to sit here and be all politically correct and start talking about all the other genders and stuff like that. I'm talking about male, female, because it's faster, it's easier, and it's just simple. And I'm going to keep it simple because I don't, I'm not going to go out there and, and be super politically correct just to appease every single group out there of people who think I should include them. I'm not. I'm talking about something simple, keeping it to the most basic points. And if you identify as any other gender or whatever the case may be for you, then you can fill in the blanks and make it apply to yourself. But I'm going to be overall and basic because I don't want to make this run on any longer than it has to just to be politically correct. I didn't go to war. As I always said, I didn't go to war to be politically correct. I went to war for free speech. And that's what I'm showing here. Just because a male is a male doesn't give him the right 
to be the man in his woman's life. He has to earn that. A woman has no obligation to answer to her boyfriend or to a male in her life. Now, when she chooses to give that man the respect of being his, her boyfriend, her fiance, husband, etc., the person of romantic significance, where there is a level of accountability and responsibility to that person, to each other, that's when she is accountable. She doesn't have to answer to him as like personal property. I'm talking about, you know, there's an accountability there between you two. If you're in a significant or a monogamous, a monogamous relationship where you guys are both with just each other, faithful, romantically involved, whether you're sexually active or otherwise, you're just romantically, you're dating, you're going, you know, just you two. If that's a situation and one day you're out all night long and you don't call the other person, that person has the right to ask you, hey, what the heck, where, you, where were you? And it is, it is, you know, you have the responsibility to explain, hey, yeah, I was gone. I was working late or whatever the case may be. Don't lie to them, but be honest. But you do have a responsibility to do that because there's an accountability effort there. This is not something you normally do. And if it is, why are you doing it? Is it because this is just how your work schedule is? Okay. But it's important to communicate and you have to uh, um, explain these things to each other so that you guys are building trust and on the same page. But that just don't forget that is a privilege that one person gives to the other it's not something you can just assume like on the first date you can't just demand that you know you know every personal thing about this person you don't have that right but when you're in a relationship and that trust has been built now there's an accountability to each other one accountability is uh, fidelity the other is honesty the other is carrying your weight in the relationship you know and then there's other parts about accountability and, and uh communication answering to each other no no one person is above the other it's an equal team there are many people out there who call uh who are under the christian umbrella and a lot of other people and other organizations or beliefs or lifestyles who believe that the man is the head of the household they identify him as the dictator but the thing is is that if you really think about it men being the head of the household is not a bad thing because men is supposed to preside in love peace and patience I meaning he's not supposed to be a hammer-fisted dictator he's supposed to be a loving servant he's supposed to be the number one person that serves that household so a king is put over a group of people a population or in this case a relationship or family and they're responsible for serving that person or that population of those individuals those subjects if you will to the best of their ability so that they can reach their fullest potential and a queen is supposed to support him in that and also carry her weight. So if you want to be the king in the relationship that you have, you need to serve your queen so that she can reach her potential. And queens need to serve their kings so that he can reach his potential. Sometimes, we're, like, it's factual. I mean, there's all these people disagreeing about how many genders there are and stuff like that. But there have been so many scientific studies that prove that men and women think differently. Even if you consider yourself transgender, you still cannot think the way a biological woman thinks. We're just created differently. That's just the way it is. Women think differently than men do. And if it weren't for women, men would lose so much. We would lose track of so much. And essentially we'd be lost. We wouldn't know how to figure out a number of things. Men are stubborn, and very often we look at a problem for hours and can't figure out how to do it. And a woman would offer, hey, can I help? And then we'll be like, no, 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 I got it. I got it. That's just our pride. We want to be able to say, yeah, I figured it out on my own. But then while we're sitting there looking and trying to figure out this little thing, our beautiful wife, who just happens to know nothing about cars, would be like, hey, babe, or the situation, I'm like, hey, babe, have you considered this? An innocent question. And that is the exact answer that you needed to solve the problem because she was able to look at it from a different perspective. Women think differently than men and they compliment men in the way they think. So I strongly encourage you, if you wanna be a king in your relationship, listen to your queen. And queens, if you wanna be a queen in your relationship, listen to your king. Now notice I said listen to, I'm not talking about be obedient to each other. No, neither of you should be a dictator over the other. 
You should be a team, equal partners. In, in reality, you should not use sex as a punishment. Don't withhold sex as a punishment. Because remember, you guys, you're in a romantic relationship and don't weaponize something that's so special, something so significant, something so important. Don't weaponize that. Keep it special. If you're really not in the mood because you guys had a big fight, just have that conversation. Say, babe, look, I'm really not in the mood. Like, if you want to, you know, I, I go ahead. I, I agree to it if you want to, but I'm not in the mood. Like, I'm really hurt by what you did. And that man really should have the respect to say, all right, babe, and back off, you know, because that's tantamount to she could feel like she's just a uh, an object to you. And I'm not going to use the, the R word. But she can possibly feel like that because she's although she's giving you consent, it's possible that she can feel like she's being used. I'm telling you, your woman can feel that one time. If your woman feels that one time, it's likely she won't forget it. And it's not about holding a grudge. It's just there's a scar that you just caused. If your woman's not in the mood because she's hurt, back off. Trust me, back off. It's not that important. The sex is not that important to risk a scar that deep. But at the same instance, women, don't weaponize sex and keep your, your significant other from having sex just because you're mad at them. Especially if it's not a big problem. Because although everybody's supposed to be faithful in their relationships and should never cheat, if you withhold sex and you weaponize sex and stuff like that, you're opening doors to a lot of temptation that doesn't need to be in a relationship. Cause they're going to sit there and think like, man, all my girl ever does is she withholds sex. She weaponizes sex. She does this. She does that. And then they're going to see those other girls that are always bluntly ready to say, Hey, I'll do it. Whenever you're ready, I'm ready, dude. I got you. We'll do this. And you don't want those voices to be the ones that he's always hearing. You want him to think I love my wife or my significant other. I love my girl. I'm not going to disrespect myself or her. But as I've said before, wrong is wrong but you also have to accept your level of responsibility and the influence of that wrong you know what i mean so like if like i've used this out I'll, I'll, I'll give you an example i've used this example before of saying if a man walks out there with all this jewelry on like gorgeous diamonds and gold and all this stuff all over himself and he's walking outside he absolutely has the right to wear all that stuff it's his right to dress how he wants and he has that right. But guess what? He's getting a lot of attention because he's saying, look at me. He's, his actions are saying, look at what I got. And guess what? People are going to look at what he's got. Two types of people are going to look at what he's got. He's going to get gold diggers looking at him. I'm like, oh, those gold diggers that look at him are going to see financial stability. A person has got money that can get them a house where they don't have to worry about anything. So they're going to go around him. That's a result of his actions. And if he gets mad because he's got gold diggers coming at him, he can't be 100% mad at them. He helped encourage that. So part of that, a portion of that responsibility falls on him. The other portion is, what about those people that come up and rob him and snatch his chains and rob him blind and beat him up and take all of his stuff? What is the likelihood that that person would have had that same experience if he didn't have all that jewelry on? Very unlikely. That doesn't make the people who robbed him less wrong. They're 100% wrong for what they did. But the person still has to accept, or the victim still has to accept his level of responsibility in that crime. He demanded attention by wearing those things, and people gave him attention. It just wasn't the attention he hoped for. So if you're going to weaponize sex and withhold sex, and your man goes out and cheats on you, your man's 100% wrong for what he did. And you can't sit there and be like, oh, if he loves me, he don't know. The fact is, is that if people put themselves in the wrong predicament, it's likely they'll, they'll fail. But it's a lot less likely that a person will make that choice if you're being a fair partner. If you're weaponizing something that is so special, so sacred, just because you want to be mad and cause hurt, you're in effect, you have a responsibility that or you have some level of accountability and responsibility to the influence of that person cheating if that person cheats it's not saying it's going to happen it's saying it's you're making it more likely now again the word likely doesn't mean going to happen it just means like the the chances 
or the likelihood, the opportunity for that to happen are higher. I'll give you another example for people who are just disagreeing going, no, no, no. If someone loves you, they're not going to cheat on you. Okay. If you live in a safe neighborhood, but you leave your door open, you might not get your house burglarized or broken into because it's a safe neighborhood. But there's still a chance that somebody that doesn't belong to that neighborhood is going to see that door being unlocked and they're going to just happen to go in there and just break into your house. They can come in as as a cable guy. Or they can come in as somebody working for the city or they can come in as somebody that looks like they belong there. And then they go in and rob you blind. And because it's a good neighborhood, people don't realize it's happening because that kind of stuff doesn't happen. But the likelihood of something like that happening is increased when people know your doors unlocked. So if you're weaponizing something so sacred and so special, it's more likely that the person you're, you're hurting is going to seek for comfort elsewhere. Don't weaponize sex. Please don't do that. If you want to go without having sex because you're hurting, communicate that and have respect for each other. But don't make that a long term thing. Like, say, I'm thinking, I think I'm just going to not have sex with you for another month or two months or, you know, until I feel like it. You don't want to do that to each other. You want to consider each other's emotions, consider each other's uh, feelings, and you want to make sure that you're there for each other. Additionally, it's so important to remember that a king only can be the king that he is if he is willing to receive the influence and the wisdom from his queen and vice versa. So women don't have the right to be treated like queens, but they have the right to be respected. Men don't have the right to be treated like kings, but they have the right to be respected. To be treated like this is something that must be earned by respecting each other and respecting yourselves, by loving yourselves first and then loving each other. Because unless you, unless you love yourself, there's no way you can love somebody else. It's impossible. Believe me, I've tried. And it took me almost 20 years to recognize that. So I just encourage every person listening right now. Treat every person with respect and love, even if you disagree with them. Give each person you date the opportunity to show you who they are. Don't be a detective and go looking for stuff. And don't suspect somebody else of doing what somebody else did to you. Give every person a fair shot, an open view, and get to know them. And, you know, if you want to take it another step forward, I encourage you to not have sex until, like, you know, my, my conservative mind mentality is don't have sex until you're married. You know, but like for those of you guys who are going to have sex when you feel it's right, you know, you have that right. My suggestion to you is don't have sex until you're really sure about this person being in the picture forever. The reason why I say that is because, once again, look at those exes with whom you were sexually active before and you can't stand some of them. You're like, oh, my gosh, that was a jerk. He's a person. I can't stand him. Even seeing him now just makes just turns me off and makes me hate him more or whatever the case may be. You just detest certain people that you may have been with in the past. But think about it. If you would have gotten to know them longer, you would have seen these flags and the sex wouldn't have cl clouded your opinion of them. So my suggestion to you is don't have sex on the first date. Don't have sex. Like, try not to even have sex in the first month. Because somebody who's able to get it the first night or the first month, it's very unlikely that they'll stick around. It's very unlikely that they will respect you because it's likely you don't respect yourself. Or that's the message that they'll get that this is easy. There's no there's no there's no working for it. This is a, you know, I have this coming. This is easy. Men don't want easy. Men don't respect easy. So if you're easy, it's very unlikely that you're going to find a good man. Cuz good men don't want easy. They want someone who respects themselves who's going to cuz that just shows that not a lot of men have been with you. I know it's a double standard that men are out there, you know, with lots of women and, you know, they can be a, 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 a womanizer or whatnot. Some women find it more attractive to have a man who's experienced because they don't want to have to teach somebody or anything like that. But, you know, guys don't want a, a woman who's been very, 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 very active. They want somebody who 
I mean, they just seem as more pure. Be that as it may, that's based off opinion. But the fact is, is that if a person respects you, they're more likely to stick around and you're able to see them for who they are and see the character of this person. And you might not like what you see, but it will save you from actually investing in the wrong reasons because the sex is so good. You'll never know because you didn't have sex with that person. So in closing, I just wanted to remind everybody, you are a king, you are a queen. Wherever, you know, the shoe fits, wear it. But you have to show the other person by earning that level of respect. Don't demand it, earn it. It's up to them to acknowledge it. Thank you so much for spending time with me on Real Talk with RJ. Signing out.